Hi, so I just wanted to make a quick video um, where I want to talk a little bit about online instruction. Specifically, I want to talk about why different instructional approaches matter online. I want to show you maybe a quick model of a lesson, talk about why some tools might serve different goals within a lesson, and then briefly show you how I maybe created uh, some of these tools uh, for my lesson. So first off, I want to talk about theory of learning, um, where I think this picture does a lot of justice, where the student comes in and it's like their, their mind is a blank slate or a tabula rasa, and it's the teacher's job to sort of pour in the knowledge. And uh, that theory of learning is called behaviorism. It's very simple to understand. Uh, it's easy to implement easy to keep things organized, right? I, I poured this lesson in on Monday, I'll pour a different lesson in on Tuesday. Um, parents know and understand this model. Unfortunately, uh, as we've talked about before, this just isn't how people learn. And I think we're all aware that simply showing students how to get the correct answer, uh, modeling that, and then asking them to practice is not how students learn mathematics, unfortunately, because it would be a lot easier if they did. <clears throat> so what does behaviorism look like during online learning? It would be, um, you know, maybe uh, talking to kids or having them watch a video on, here's how you add fractions and now practice it a bunch. And uh, I think that's what a lot of online learning looks like for, for lots of students. And I don't think they're probably not learning a whole lot of math that way. So um, our other theory of learning, constructivism, that kids are not blank slates. They bring experiences and ideas into class with them. I think anyone who's taught more than like a day realizes that kids are definitely not blank slates. And that learning happens when something doesn't make sense and kids have to reorganize or add on to their existing ideas. It's important in constructivism and how people learn that meaning is both individually and collectively negotiated by the learner and their peers. So what does this look like online? Well, it's probably similar to how it looks in class where there's some sort of prompt offered typically by the teacher, um, followed by opportunities for students to share and build on their ideas. Um, so I just think it's really important we keep this in mind as we start the transition to fully online learning in the fall. So uh, what might a lesson look like for me? Well, um, as <clears throat> students log in to Zoom after you know we say our hellos and everything, I might shoot them a link in chat and that would send them here. <clears throat> so you can see here the directions, click on your group number. So after they've clicked there and I've put them into breakout groups, they would find whatever group they're in. Uh, say we're in group four, they'd click here and it would bring them to their activity. And the direction said, and they can of course refer back to it, uh, work on frames one and two. So in my group of say three of my peers, we would talk about which ones we thought didn't belong and then maybe put a posting note. Um, you know, A, because it has no yellow and it might be um, something, especially at the beginning of the year, uh, kids might say uh, before they or maybe adding a little bit more nuanced ideas and maybe we put it there. Everyone in the group can do something like that. And then we'll move on to slide two. So this is really um, at the heart of the lesson, um, which is whose learning goal is um, having kids understand the definition of area. So they would work on this activity for a while and then you can remember in the directions it says, uh, record your group's answers below. So again, we're group four. So we're going to go to this table and we'll, you know, collectively start to type our answers in here. You know, uh, so we thought the answer was red. You know, first we realized that one, that two greens equaled one blue and three greens equals one red. Then we, you get the point. Um, now, something I put in here is for groups that fast finish, and as the teacher, I'd have access to this so I can see as groups are finishing, plus obviously I can be visiting their groups. Um, fast finishers, I'll, I'll, I'll say to work on this problem, and 
then we'll probably bring the whole class together to talk about, to read one another's uh, ideas and talk about them and try to come up with a collective understanding of what is area. Now, I want to talk about, so this is actually a different link, some ways you can maybe handle closure at the end of uh, a lesson. So one would just be have them go to slide four here, right? And they can put a post note on what they think area is. Um, I think using something like Jamboard is really effective if you want lots of inner group conversation and ideas shared within the group. I think if you're looking for whole group instruction, um, our whole group sharing, first off, you can just bring them back to Zoom and have them talk about it. You can, of course, do something like this where groups can read one another's. Within Google Docs, you can use something you know, like a Nearpod or a Padlet to have kids uh, post their answers individually. Um, there it is, dot, dot, dot. And you can see they post, oh, just kidding. Um, but if I was actually logged in, that would work. Now, I do want to show one thing that I, I've shown several of you before that might be my favorite, which is simply using a Google Form. So when kids click on that, that link that I showed right here, this is what they would see. So this is just them answering it individually and honestly. Um, and then what I think is pretty cool about this is after they submit, <clears throat> they can see what other kids have responded. You can see this is all anonymous to them, but from the teacher point of view, it is not. I mean, it's only me responding, but you can see who puts these responses in. So it lets kids um, be able to share without having to risk, you know, they're maybe they're not comfortable sharing as much around their peers, but you can still know so it avoids anything, you know, crazy happening. So those are some real simple ideas. Let me just show you quickly how you can use uh, some of these tools. Um, oh, actually, I think I wanted to wrap it up. I'm sorry. I want to remind us as we plan lessons that learning happens when meaning is negotiated. And that's why lots of, you'll hear people say learning is social because that's where that meaning is negotiated. And then if you want to talk about any of this stuff, I'm happy to talk about or plan with you or talk about tools. There's lots of options out there. Now I want to show you um, maybe how I use some of these tools. So first off, Jamboard, if you haven't used it, um, all you do is in your Google Drive, or let me actually, sorry, this is my own one. Let me get into my Spear one. And anyway, I would just click New, under More is Jamboard. So this is a completely blank Jamboard, and what I could do is, you know, here's my curriculum, and I could just, boom, come back here, wait for it to load. All right, so then, you know, obviously, like, if I want to make it bigger, I can make it bigger. And then if I want to add a slide, do that. Go to slide two, and maybe uh, I want to add one of these practice problems. And then just hit Control-V, get that in there. Um, you know, I want to add another slide. That's no problem. Now, when I want to share it with them, uh, this is how I would get the link. Um, and where that's important is this, what I like to call like a splash page. So this is just a Google Doc. So let's start with just a new Google Doc. And what you could do is just say like group one, group two, I'll just do three groups. And now I'm gonna hit control enter and that's going to page break me group one, and now I'm just gonna hit insert table, two by two table, and maybe I'll bring it over here. And then I'll like, whatever question number one, I'll, I wanna ask here, right? Question two, follow question is here. Um, and then I'm gonna get over here, I'm gonna hit control enter. Uh, and I'll quickly just copy that, control enter, copy that. I'll change this to group three, group two. Now here's something you have to do is Changes from normal text to heading. Normal text to heading. Normal text to heading. And now from here, if you highlight it, you click this thing link. You can also click Control K, that's what I usually do. And now we want to search our headings. 
And when somebody clicks that, I want it to take them to group one. I hit control K here. I want that to take them to group two. And I want this to take them within headings to group three. Um, so that's how you get the inert one, which is what I actually use for the Google Doc. However, Jamboards um, are actually located um, outside of this Google Doc. So now if a kid clicks, say, down to group three, it'll take them there. Um, and this one, I think, is what teachers are more unfamiliar with, which is why I wanted to show that first. To get people to go to the Jamboard, um, group three. Um, again, I hit share, I hit copy link, and all I'm going to do here, it's actually the same thing. I can hit control K again or just go to this link, but now I'm actually going to control V to paste the link in. <clears throat> then if I wanted, a, say I want group two to go you know, here, uh, I can do something, control K. V, something like that. So this is how you do these splash pages. So now again, here's group one. It takes them exactly to this thing that I just created. I'm trying to think, oh, Google, uh, this Google exit ticket, this Google form. So again, within your Spear account, if you just click new, Google form, and then we call it like, right, exit ticket or something like that. You can describe it if you want. And then, you know, what is area? And then I want that to be paragraph, short answer, it doesn't matter. Um, now there's a couple options you might want to change to change the color. You click here, blue is my favorite color, I'll go with that. Um, now in the settings, uh, you want kids to be able to see summary text, that's where they can see each other's answers. I keep it usually restricted to Aspira. Um, and I usually don't let them hit another response, otherwise sometimes things get a little crazy. Um, now, if I want to click here, this is how I get a copy of the link that I'm ready to put into my Zoom chat. So I might just like put it even in, uh, like create a note or something and, and put it there, put it in a Google Microsoft Word document or something. But I have that ready to go, and yeah. Sorry, I just remembered as I was watching my own video that I didn't show something that's pretty important in terms of Jamboard. And what that is, is that after I've created my Jamboard, now I actually wound up creating two Jamboards, and you can see that group one and group actually have different they look similar but these pictures are actually different and that's intentional and the curriculum provided that so that hopefully they can have a good discussion because they're like no we had red we're sure that's right and they're like oh we're sure blue is right um, so that's intentional but let's just say you've created these two different uh, jam boards and that's not enough first off you need six of them so you are able to just take two at a time and do uh, just a regular copy and, sorry, make a copy. It takes a second. And then I actually want to do that one more time so that I have my six groups represented. And then I'm just going to go ahead after this is created and now change the names. So remember, all the ones that say copy of group one, um, so I'll call this, you know, group two demo. Group three demo. And the ones that were group four, the different one. And then I'll know that groups four, five, and six, and one, two, and three should have the same answer just to you know, keep it easy for myself. And then, uh, I don't think anyone only teaches one math class. So the good news is, again, we can literally take all six of them, make a copy, 
and then maybe you know the first time you teach it, you know, your first group of kids, it's this set, and then the second group of kids, it will be this set. Sorry, it's just taking a second. So I, I will not lie to you guys, I, I do think that this is annoying, but it's not terribly annoying, and I think it's probably worth it. And then, so if you teach it just the two groups of kids, you can do that. You can repeat, and you'll have copy of, copy of. Um, and then you'll just know, first time I teach it, second time I teach it, third time I teach it. You can put in different files, uh, different folders, if you uh, do that for different classes. Now, I'm actually not done. So something that's really important, and you can do this, thankfully, all at once. So I want to click here, and I want to click Share. I clicked them all by holding Control and clicking them. So right now, there's it's pretty restricted. So I want to change it. And here's the cool thing. Uh, I can actually change all of them at once. So I'm going to go from restricted to a Spear Academy. Or anyway, so I'll click a Spear Academy. And then permissions. You can't let kids just view or they won't be able to add those sticky notes. So I'm going to change it to editor. And now I've done it for all, like I literally did all 12 at once and click done. So I forgot to show you guys that, and I think that's important. So yeah, that's it now for real. Bye.